I am one of your hosts today. My name is Bonita Ag, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. I am the education coordinator with Strong Beginnings Healthy Start, serving women of color and families of color here in Kent County. I am a certified lactation counselor. I am a childbirth educator, but most importantly, I am a black woman, a black mother of two adult, beautiful black daughters and four beautiful black children. And I share that in this space because it is important to me to center me and to remind me what grounds me in the work that we do. So I am showing up here having had my own birth and breastfeeding story as a black woman in the United States of America and um, giving birth in our county. So that's who I am professionally. That's who I am personally. It is a reminder of uh, to remain passionate and compassionate about the work that I do serving families of our county. And with that, I'm going to lean out of this conversation and invite my phenomenal co-host into the space for an introduction. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Liana Moore. I am a certified doula, certified lactation specialist, um, serving the Grand Rapids area and surrounding areas. I'm also a mom of three little girls, um, all of which I had a breastfeeding journey with, and they are part of my drive for what I do. I'm very, very... Um, in tune with what my community needs and supporting my community. And that's why I became a birth worker. So I'm just excited to be here. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And yeah, I'm excited for this conversation that we're going to have today. Excellent. Thanks. Next slide. Next slide. <laughs> So I just want to go over a few housekeeping things with everyone on how to um, engage during our webinar today. We just invite you to use the chat for all your comments and questions, and we'll be keeping an eye on that during the presentation to get those answered for you. Use the emojis found in your chat box if something resonates with you and you want to um, just kind of give us a little idea of how you're feeling during the presentation. And then also we would like you um, to know that you may be invited to respond verbally. So you can just use the raise the hand feature and be invited to share your response. Do you wanna go into our polling question? Yeah. So our polling question today is, how many years has Black Breastfeeding Week been around? Let me just answer the polling question. We'll just see the results. Kendall, are you seeing anyone responding to the poll? And if you cannot see the polling question, please add your answer in the chat. So you have that chat there for? Mm -hmm. There we go. I'm seeing some. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you, Amanda. We see you. both adding. Yeah. So, yes, we do have some results so I can share with you. So, uh, we have six out of 10 that says three, three out of 10 that says eight, zero out of 10 for 11, and one out of 10 for 15 years. Excellent. Liana? Yes. So the answer is 11. This is the 11th year of Black Breastfeeding Week. This year's theme is We Outside. 
um, just to encourage that we are feeding our babies everywhere and taking them on the go with their mama's milk. That was one of the things that we wanted to share today because we want to kind of give you a little bit of backstory about Black Breastfeeding Week um, and just simply that it had we've been celebrating Black Breastfeeding Week for now 11 years. So you are um, joining us today uh, in the 11th year. So, so glad that that you are participating and thank you for responding to those polling to the polling question. So now for why we're here today um, to hear from our presenter and our speaker, our guest. I want to share a small a little bio of Loren J. Turner. She is a certified birth doula and talented artist who uses her energetic love for birth to create works of art dedicated to promoting Black maternal health. She is known for her beautiful, vibrant images that celebrate the intimate and diverse moments of motherhood. Through her work, she hopes to raise awareness about the challenges faced by Black mothers during pregnancy, childbirth, their lactation journey, and beyond. So welcome, 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 Loren. Thank you. Wow, man, that, that sounds amazing. <laughs> and that's Mia. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here and I see so many amazing people in the chat. Um, thank you so much for having me. So I guess it's my turn to share the screen. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go. Awesome. Okay. And I'll just while you're while you're um, setting up, you know, many of you um, have shared in the chat that you love her work. So you're familiar with her work. So we are honored to have her here today. And I will tell you that I was scrolling um, probably last year, maybe months ago, and I came across these beautiful images and I thought, my goodness, so many things resonated with me. I felt so seen with your work. And I thought as we were planning this event, she is someone that I would love to bring to our event and have this conversation. And um, it took me a little while before I even had the, you know, the courage to reach out to you. Mm -hmm. Remember, we talked about that. And um, but I did anyway, you know, um, I believe we're, we're created to do hard things. And so um, I reached out and she did not hesitate to say yes, that she would participate and join us today. So um, with that, I will just go ahead and turn it over to you. And I know you'll tell us a little bit of your backstory and who you are today and fill in all the wonderful spaces and places um, concerning who you are. Yes, thank you so much, man. Like, I love your energy. And I'm really happy to be here. <clears throat> Sorry, I am also getting over COVID. So I might be a little hoarse. I might have to, um, you know, <clears throat> clear out my throat. Okay, so... I love art and I started this journey just like you. I started it because I had these amazing birth stories um, and I can't wait to share them. They are so, they're completely different, but they were both at home. Um, so this is a little bit about my story. Um, so my grandmother, uh, she recently passed away and um, I really wanted to celebrate her and her work because she taught me so much about being black and she taught me she was a historian um she worked in the school system and she just was the light that helped guide me um to create works of art and to believe in myself too um so my grandmother was an educator and she was passionate about history um there were times i didn't believe her but i learned through birth work so when i i mean by that is i didn't necessarily understand how um, being a black woman would impact my life because I was protected by her. But when I got into this real world and I've seen birth happen um, in a hospital, in the birth center, and even, um, you know, um, it just, it broke my heart, but it also helped me understand that it, it needs to be some type of voice. Um, and I found my voice through art. So yeah. Um, she bought all my art supplies. My grandmother always had me. I, I just, my grandmother blessed me with um, her ability to see my worth. And that's really important for me to talk about today because you might have a child or you might be someone who sees a light in someone else. 
especially children, we may help them guide themselves or guide them to creating. And um, yeah, so that's what my grandmother was to me. Um, and my journey started with my elementary um, art teacher. He was so amazing. Um, he was the type of person that saw that I was kind of struggling. I'm more of an introvert and he would help, he would help me. He would um, have me sit with him at lunchtime <laughs> and um, he was just a light. Um, so I wanted to also mention him too. So who is Lorraine? I want to also say that when I started painting, I hated painting. Like um, I had another art teacher. I took art um, in high school and I started painting then. And I hated painting. And a lot of people will say, why? Why would you hate it? It's a skill that you have to learn. So if you're someone who is thinking about creating works of art and you're like, man, I'm not sure if I have the skill set keep going, like just keep going, whether it's becoming a birth worker, whether it's learning the basics of lactation to support other people, um, really submerge yourself and know that you have the power. You just have to learn the basic skill. Yeah, so I always say that. <laughs> and feel free to um, make comments in the chat. I would love to have more interaction um, if you have any comments or questions about that. I'm not able to see the chat, so yeah. So my our goal, our collective goal is to um, why should we create art? So I would love to have conversations about why we should create art. Um, discover the central role of storytelling in art. Exploring how it drives creativity and captures the essence of human experiences. Storytelling through art is how we communicate. Sometimes um, I get caught up in speaking but I'm able to tell stories with my art, um, like the painting behind me. I'm able to talk about how um, breastfeeding and also breast pumping is something that should be celebrated, especially in our community. So um, storytelling is so much easier to do it through art than to actually do it through my, my words. <laughs> um, color theory. <clears throat> um, color theory is, it's amazing because it allows you, and actually we'll talk about that later in the slide. I'm already ready. <laughs> um, but it will help you gain confidence in um, comprehending color theory. So we'll talk about that. Art and birth, explore the connection between art and the birthing process, uncovering how artistic expression can influence and enhance the birth space. Um, and of course, representation matters. We have to talk about the importance of seeing yourself through art because there's not a lot of art where we get to see Black women thriving, um, Black families living their lives <clears throat> in certain spaces. Um, online, online gives us the opportunity to connect with art and connect with other artists, but actually in the hospitals, we, we don't get that. So our goal is to talk about representation and how you can incorporate that, incorporate that in your daily life. Yeah. Let me know if you have any questions. So why should uh, why should we create art? So art makes us feel something. It gives us a voice. It's something to do. It feels like therapy. It feels like meditation, and it helps us connect with our community. Is anybody else in the chat? Um, uh, artist, because I saw a photographer and I definitely count that as doing art. Um, you can do art in so many different ways. And I chose to do something different than just painting because music is art. Um, singing is art. Um, even just being in space with yourself, um, rock painting is art. Just like doing art, it, it is, it's in everything. It's in our, um, it's in our blood. Yeah. Mm. This is a big one for me. Um, just because you walk away from um, art doesn't mean you stop being an artist. And in my experience as an artist, I um, I walked away from art. So I ended up going to an art high school. I ended up wanting to do art. I wanted to go to New York and be that artist. But um, I had some family issues and um, I wasn't able to get in a college that I really wanted to get in because of money. And so um, I ended up finding my partner. We ended up getting married. And I said, you know what? I don't want to do art anymore. And um, 
my birth story, my my um, challenges with my daughter. So my daughter, she ended up having um, issues with coming out. So my son was amazing. Um, I birthed him in July. The birds were chirping. I was hands off. Like the midwives didn't give me a cervical check. Um, I had a home birth and it was amazing. It was magic. But my daughter taught me that midwives were smart and they knew what they were doing. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> through that experience, I tried to figure out why my births were so different. So through her birth experience, through my challenges with her, I became a doula. And through being a doula, I saw some art of, um, I forgot her name, but she's a very popular birth artist just like me. She she did some art and I was like, man, I can do that. I can create just like that. And I was so inspired to create art. Um, and I had to like, I had to get back to what I loved. Like, um, I just remember that day where I started painting, I picked up my art supplies and I just started painting. And um, just like I mentioned the first slide, I started meditating while painting. I started really um, grasping a relationship through birth and um, breastfeeding um, and lactation through art because of the challenges I faced with my daughter. So um, just because you walked away from art does not mean you stop being an artist. If you were an artist, in elementary school, you you still artists now. You just have to <laughs> start doing the art, um, start becoming passionate all over again, fall in love with art again. And definitely feel free to share your experiences in the chat. I, I really want to hear you. Um, I want to hear what you've gone through and how art okay. has impacted yeah, your life. Let me see. I see someone that says, I'm, Amanda says, I'm a scientist, but I've recently gotten into film. I have a deep appreciation for art. <laughs> and then we have a Kristen who says I'm a potter who does birthy theme mugs. It's all of those Ooh. things. I love that. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Film is so I does, I'm just getting back into art because of her little one. Okay. Doing art with the little ones, man. It they they have a different set of tools. They have a different set of you know, yes. like um I, I love that idea. I paint with my daughter too. Thank you so much for sharing those things. I was also someone who loved film too. Definitely, I I would love to see your film. Um, film is so important. Yeah. Okay. I love that. Um, so after I took a break from art, I focused on helping people. Um, I was still trying to find my voice. Yeah. Um, art has given me, like I said before, I'm an introvert. Um, I struggle with anxiety and I can say these things out loud because now that I am someone who really wants to push their self to come out of discomfort, I know that I have a message and I know that there are people who are inspired not just to buy paintings or um, to see the artwork, but they're inspired because they're saying to themselves, I'm going to get back in art. And I think that um, everyone should do something related to art, whether it's music, whether it's even, you know, um, helping your little ones find their voice in art. So, um, yeah, I love that. Um, so, uh, and I'm, I'm actually going off the top of my head. So my notes are not noting. <laughs> um, yeah, but I said my second birth was challenging from the start to now. Okay. So I had fear. Ooh, I had, so I had fear, lack of community. That's one reason why I decided to go into this work of birth work. I felt my, I felt like I didn't really have a community with my postpartum. And through my breastfeeding groups, I would go to breastfeeding groups and I met people who were like the same, um, had children the same age as me. And I was able to build a community through um, my breastfeeding journey which led me to want to do art around community. Um, I had family tension. I didn't know myself. Wow, I'm, I'm telling all my tea. <laughs> um, not knowing my worth through art, I learned to know my worth. And if you're someone who's creating art, definitely um, know that no matter if you feel like you don't have a skill set, no matter if you feel like you're not there, it's really important for you to know your worth when starting because it will bite you in the long run. Um, that's a conversation for a different day, maybe. <laughs> um, not having boundaries and not having a strong voice for myself. 
And I also added in the notes, postpartum is forever. And a lot of people, they say, you know, I'm, I'm going through postpartum. And I, I have to highlight that postpartum depression and postpartum is two separate things. Um, postpartum, just a time period after you have your baby. And like I said, it's forever. But um, art has helped me through some of my challenges during postpartum. And here's a picture of me and my baby and my husband. Um, this picture means so much to me. And I saw that it was a birth photographer in the chat. I love birth photography. Like, you are the reason why we're able to see these images. My midwife took this photo. Um, and this is right after I was having a challenging time getting my daughter out. And if she didn't take this photo, I would have never seen myself. <laughs> <laughs> I look, you know, I look, look, I just going through birth, but I'm, I just love this photo. This makes me feel like I'm empowered. This photo means so much to me, and I'm, I'm happy to be able to share it today. Ooh, inspired. And, and in the chat, maybe you can um, share what inspires you, what inspires you to do the work that you do, what inspires you to help um, become a resource for people. Um, even outside of art. And so for me, my struggles inspired me. My struggles with not feeling accepted, um, it inspired me. And when I say not feeling accepted, I've always been someone who struggled with not knowing, um, not being able to fit in. Um, it's been something that I've been struggling through through my life. Um, and I also found out that I might be narrow spicy. I'm not sure if you know that term, but narrow spicy just means that you're someone who thinks different. So you may have autism, you may have ADHD, you may um, have some challenges with communicating, or you just may be someone who people see that is different. And through art, I started accepting myself. I had a um, a deal with Avant, the bottle brand, and I created a painting of um um, three, um, three lactating people sitting around, and um, my tattoo is sunflowers. Sunflowers is a hidden symbol for disability, and I think that's one thing we don't talk about in the birth community on um, what it's like to be someone who's struggling and has always struggled um, finding their footing with being a parent. You know, being autistic or um, having ADHD does not make you a bad parent. It just means that you need to learn. Um, some extra tools to help you. You need more hands on deck. Um, you need to c communicate what you're going through. Um, see a therapist <laughs> um, and just maybe submerge yourself in something that you love like art. So yeah, what inspired you? Um, um, Amanda says, I feel inspired by wanting more for Black, Brown, BIPOC women and birthing people. I understand how it feels to be marginalized, disregarded, and cast aside. So I feel inspired to remove barriers for others in ways that I can. Okay. Love that. Yeah, sit with that. I love that. Mm. That's beautiful. Um, I'm so Ida happy. says, let me see. Ida says, appreciation and being an inspiration for others honestly keeps keep me going keeps me going and inspired you never know who's watching you in such a positive light mm -hmm. i wish i could see the chat <laughs> i wish i could read it can you, can you read that again i'm like wow yes um ida says appreciation and being an inspiration for others honestly keeps me going and inspired you never know who's watching you in such a positive light that's so true mm. and if that. if any of our participants would want to uh, use the raise hand feature and then just give voice in this space about um, what inspires you that would be okay as well You know what, and, and also to add on to this conversation, what inspires me is hearing people's stories. And um, a lot of my artwork, I when I started out, I started with watching people. 
So um, the painting on the left of the mom holding the baby is a birth worker. And she, um, her story and the, the expression that she had when she was holding her baby, it, it inspired me to create. Um, as an artist, I'm not afraid to say that I'm inspired by people, <laughs> you know, um, copyright, trademark, all that. But um, I'm, I'm really inspired by listening to people because people, um, they have stories to share. And that's one thing that kept me um, inspired. Yeah. I'll just jump in here really quickly and and invite Liana to oh. share in the space yeah. because I know that she does um, some painting. So we would love to know a little bit about what inspires you or um, if you just want to share what has inspired you to become a doula. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll do the, the, the doula stuff first, obviously. So um hearing birth stories of other people in my community um especially those negative birth stories i really wanted to find a way to be of assistance to the people in my community looking for it and i want everyone to have the most positive experience they can have so that really was my driving force behind becoming a doula and becoming a birth worker um and then art has always been around for me as long as I can remember. I did um, painting and drawing uh, just since I was a kid. And my grandmother made sure I was in art classes during the summer. And then uh, as COVID hit, like right before COVID, my therapist told me, you need to find a hobby, right? That you don't have to, that you're not trying to monetize. So painting was what I did. Um, and it was very relaxing and calming for me. And then COVID happened. And I painted a lot right at the beginning, obviously. Because <laughs> there was nothing else to do. But um, it was just my way to ground myself. Um, get my mind space into a better way. A better space. Just with having my kids at home. Uh, and going through that pandemic has been a thing. And I crochet. That's my other art form that I kind of get things out. So, yeah. I love that your grandmother supported you. Yes. She bought you the art supply. <laughs> she did. She did. Definitely. Mm. I love that. Ashley says, my birth stories were my inspiration to be a doula after having two birth when I was ignored. I did research into natural birth and learned my birth rights. Once I got into the work and found out I wasn't the only one ignored, it fueled me to even more to keep going and share what I learned with my community. That's amazing. I'm glad you turned that negative experience into something positive. I think it's beautiful to listen to like birth, like um, birth workers and de unveiling their stories. It's always a reason why we become birth workers, you know? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I wrote in my notes my struggles with watching people not get treated humanely. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's hard being a birth worker. I feel like more birth workers should be doing something like, like just creating. And I love that you're creating without wanting to like think about selling, you know? Yeah. And that's something I can say I'm struggling with out loud, just creating to create. And I'm inspired by you right now. Cause I would love I would love to just create something just because I, I can, you know? You're right. That's the challenges of being a professional artist. Mm. I love this, man. This is, ah. Oh. Okay. So my mission as an artist, my mission is to capture the essence of parenthood. Um, I think we missed like the first slide where we talk about critiques and I think critiques are really important 
um, if you are someone who wants to get into art, it's um, you can Google like how to create a critique, but you usually say something positive in the beginning and then maybe say something constructive um, towards the end. I would love to have a critique about this painting. Um, like maybe talk about how it makes you feel. You can talk about um, the basic things like the colors. Um, you can talk about how the, the hands are positioned. Um, you can talk about how this mom has like the, the I want to say fungo, but I don't know if that's inappropriate, <laughs> but she has her belly and, and it's just out there. It, it's a beautiful belly that carried a baby. Um, and then maybe you can say something um, that relates to uh, maybe some challenges you faced or just, you know, give me a critique. Feel free to say it in the chat or raise your hand. I would love to hear some voices. I was going to say I like the use of butterflies in the background because it's representative of that transformation experience of becoming a parent and just that rebirth of not just, not the birth of the baby themselves, but of the birthing parent as well. And monarchs are my favorite butterfly. <laughs> I think um, being a birth worker, we we have this understanding that we put mom first. And um, it's really important for people to show up for mom and not just want to hold the baby or touch the baby. Um, and I think that um, moms are, I mean, of course, moms are being transformed when they get to meet their baby for the first time. You just become a completely different person. You have a different set of morals and I mean, even if you have the same worlds, they, they become stronger yeah. when you have a baby. Absolutely. Kristen says she um, agrees that butterflies equal trans transformation, rebirth, and she loves this postpartum squishy belly that's often hidden from public's mindset about birth recovery. And Amanda says, I love the look of peace and calm on the person's face and the love for her body based on the openness of the outfit. Like I peep the skin to skin and this photo really, this photo feels really calming to me. Mm -hmm. And I want to say also um, this, this person in the painting, her mom purchased the painting. Her mom, like um, it was just a painting that I had and her mom would hit me up. She said, hey, I want to buy that piece. That's my daughter. And um, I think it was a few years later, um, so her mommy brought her painting of her holding her baby. I think that's amazing. I love that. <laughs> I love that. So we're going to talk about a little bit of color theory. I love color theory. I'm going to try to, I'm not sure how we are with time, but um, why is art a great tool for connection? Making art feels like healing parts of ourselves and the connection between art, work, and view. The view, I meant viewer, is just as important. Um, color theory, visual arts, color theory is a body of practical guidance for color mixing. Um, I guess that can give you my own spew. I really wanted you to see how this red vibrates on this green. <laughs> I was just like, let's just play around with the color theory. Um, color theory is in advertisement. Um, like when you talk, when you think about McDonald's, um, the color orange is supposed to make you feel hungry. Um, the color red is supposed to be passion, but can also be seen as anger. Um, so color theory is in everything. And if you, um, if you happen to just Google or even go on Pinterest, you will just see all the ways color theory can play with your mind. When you go to a hospital, they're usually, um, muted colors, pastel colors like blue. Um, when you when presidents have their ties, they they choose sep um, certain ties to represent what they're um, supposedly going to be talking about. It's just interesting to know like color theory has played a role in our life, and maybe we don't know it, but it's there. Um, another tool is our stories. Knowing the story behind the art may bring healing to us individually. Um, subject matter, subject matter is really important to me. As I mentioned before, I, I was doing art. And um, like through the high, high school, I was just doing art. I didn't have like 
something that I latched on to until I gave birth to my daughter. And um, it's just so weird to say out loud, but I'm, I am so drawn to lactation and birth that it's been something I've been passionate about for years. So if you are someone who's just looking for something to get into, just try, just like, um, do things, um, test things out, go to museums, go to art galleries. Um, there are like galleries that may have openings around you. I'm in Baltimore, so we have a few art galleries. Just put yourself out there and see if it's something that you'll latch on to. Because I, I latched on to birth and like, <laughs> shit like crazy. Um, so community, um, culture, finding people who are connected through similar ideologies and or experiences, um, like we are right now, we're all black moms celebrating black uh, black breastfeeding week. We all share this this desire to help people through their lactation journey, or to just be a voice um to represent those people, our marginalized um community. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions about um um. Ooh, I heard it. <laughs> Um, this is <laughs> this is a little bit about what I just said. So on one side, it's like um, the negative, but on the other side, it's like the positive. So um, the color pink can be seen as sensitive, but also feminine. Um, red can be seen as urgency, but also passion. Now, there are some some real nasty ways of of companies using color theory to hurt certain types of people. Um, like black is seen as evil. Um, when you watch cartoons, well, the later Disney cartoon or the earlier Disney cartoons, you'll see people with big noses or darker skin like Scar and they'll be seen as evil. Um, but in reality, you know, the colors can mean powerful. Um, it can mean power. I think it's really important to know this because they kind of tricking us with the colors. Um, but yeah. I think um, Disney is working towards stopping some of these things, but some of these things won't be stopped because it's enriched in our language too. Yeah. Let me let me know if you have any questions about color theory. I really need to focus on this too. I'm not sure. Can you see the? Can you see this? So brown yeah, is seen as the pink of wool. Yeah, we can see him. Okay. So with color theory, um, I want to also point out that sometimes when you're painting, you are not really able to see things like um, like you need to see them. So when I'm painting, sometimes I put the painting if I have like a an issue with the hand or if I have something that I'm trying to see, but I can't really see. Sometimes I put in black and white and I wanted to show um, this painting off. This painting was inspired by a photographer named Leon. He's an amazing photographer. Um, if you go to my social media, you'll see that I tagged him and you can see his work. His name is Leon Johnson. And um, he reached out to me and said, hey, I love your work. Let's do a collaborate, uh, collaboration piece. And um, he allowed me to paint from his image. In the background, the red is very vibrant. And to me, it represents passion. But on the black and white, you can see that I also added some some like darks and highlights. Um, and I also, when I'm painting, if I can't see something, I turn it upside down. Um, sometimes seeing works of art um, in a different light will help you paint. And sometimes I also use a mirror. I have a mirror right here too. So um, if you're painting, if you're just starting out and you're worrying about proportion, I don't really worry about proportion too much. I kind of just like to just go in it. But if you're someone who's interested in learning about proportion and art, um, there are some tricks to it. So <laughs> yeah, you can see that there are still a strong value between the um, one on the left and the one on the right, even though it seems like it's the same amount of vibrancy, but it's not. I'm trying to teach y'all my tricks. <laughs> and here's another piece. Um, this one is called Birth of the Universe. Um, this piece is one of my, my favorite pieces because I just, like you said, you paint it for fun. I was just painting for fun. 
I remember it like it was yesterday. And this is one of my best selling um, works of art. Um, yeah, you can give me a critique on this. Tell me what you think about it. You can share what colors you see or how, um, you know, how it relates to you. And maybe show, um, tell me something that is um, something that's challenging. Um, Amanda says, wow, that is stunning. Uh, stunning. You are so gifted. Christy says, beautiful. I love them both. Yeah. yeah. Leslie says, your art is so beautiful and stirs up emotion. Thank you. Okay. So the birthing space. Mm -hmm. um, how can we include art within the birth space? Maybe you can get some feedback on how you would um, include art. Remember, art is not just about physical paintings. It's, I'm, I'm going to give all, all, all I'm going to give it. I'm going to stop talking. Maybe <laughs> someone in the chat or raise your hand, share how art can be included. Um, Ida says music and lighting. Kristen says decorating or painting affirmation cards. Mm -hmm. Oh, music. I was listening to Sade when I pushed out my baby girl. Oh, vibes. Yeah. <sighs> I was, yeah. when I turned that on, I was just, it, and also, I want to talk about culture too. When I was in labor, I don't even know, I should share this, <laughs> but I had um, a midwife student and my midwife from my previous birth. And I said, Oh, can you play Sade? And she thought I said, Shorty. She said, oh, I don't know what shorty is. I was like, I didn't, I didn't know. After when my husband told me about it, I was like, dang, well, I'm glad you told her. <laughs> you know, um, I didn't say shorty. I said shorty. Um, That's but I, I think it's important to be around people who know what you're talking about. Like the simple Absolutely. things um, can throw off your birth, right? But yeah, music, um, lighting. Um, when I was when I was in my doula um, mode, I would bring fake candles. I would I had these um, flowers that lit up. I was so into transforming the birth space. I had a client who, um, when I first met this client, she told me, you know, she hit me up and said, "Hey, I want a doula." And I thought, you know, I'm in the bag. I already have this. And then when I met her and her boyfriend, he was like, "I'm not paying for this." And he was so dismissive. And I said, you know what, okay. This is when I was first starting. I said, okay, I, I got you, girl. I, I'm, I'm going to show up. And so um, she was having an induction in the hospital. And I came and I set up the, the room. I had my candles. I had my aromatherapy. I was like doing my thing, turn the, the lights down. And um, he walked me to the car and he said, thank you. I, I wouldn't know what I would do without you. And he paid me $600 on the spot. <laughs> And I thought that was so funny because if I if I said, oh, you know what? I mean, this is earlier in my career, too. You need to know your value. You need to get paid for your I'm sorry. But he needed it. And that was just me bringing my, you know, my, um, just my gadgets. So I think it's really important for us to transform the space, especially when we're in a hospital setting, even through postpartum. Um, circling back to Black Breastfeeding Week when you are someone who's supporting someone else, you know, really set that stage for them if they're struggling. Um, I had a client who was struggling with um, lactation. And when she came home, she felt like she wasn't making enough milk. I let her vent. I set up the bed for her. I put up that bobby pillow. Um, and she was she was doing her thing. And she was like, oh, thank you. And I'm like, I didn't do anything. I just came. I set up your room. You know, I, I turned the lights down. I made it really intimate um, for her and her baby. So I think it's important um, in the birth space and also during postpartum, treat yourself to those things and help your clients treat themselves or your friends and family. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, so this is basically everything we just talked about. Art in the yeah. birthing space, dimming lights, um, birth photography or art books. I think it's really important to see the images of what birth can look like um, and, and does look like. Um, birth affirmation art, you can just 
sit down with your family and write out affirmations. Um, I think that's amazing. Like when people have family, um, a strong family support and they write out affirmations for them and they read them during birth. I had a client who had that happen. I was, it was just amazing and very emotional to not have read them, but until, um, I mean, read them when they were in labor. So that's just Mm -hmm. something that I I love. I love to see um, natural inspired art um, and personalized artwork. Music in the birth space, um, realization, pain management. Music can help in so many different ways. It can go from, you can be like anxious, someone who is just waiting for baby to come, um, ready for an induction. You're just sitting there, no, you need to have something. You can even watch film. Um, Like I said before, film um, is something I was passionate about too. Someone in the chat was saying that they were passionate about film. And Mm -hmm. um, watching movies, really getting out of being in the hospital, focusing on just something that is exciting or something that is um, interesting. Um, TikTok, ooh, <laughs> it's addictive. Um, but it yeah, um, yeah, it is, right? It's horrible. Um, personalized playlist, you can create a playlist that is um, meaningful, that is um, something that, you know, reminds you of, of your family. Um, I had a client who, she, um, she had her gospel music playing and they were in the thick of labor. Um, there's a, a portion when you are in labor and you feel like giving up, but you got to give in. She was listening to her music and it, it gave her the the space to just be with her body. This was at a birth center and she was just swaying and holding her baby and just speaking. And um, it was an amazing experience to see, but she was mentally somewhere where she needed to be to focus on baby. Um, motivation and empowerment. You can listen to Sierra, you know, <laughs> those motivational, um, upbeat empowerment songs are amazing. Um, enhancing the atmosphere, um, guide, guided meditation, visual, visualization, excuse me. Um, there, it's not just music. You can listen to sounds, um, nature sounds. It will really help in the birth space, but you have to go with what you want. You can't just, <laughs> you know, sit there, wait for a baby to come. And you're just like, come on, come on, nature, come on. And you have to really be in tune with what you're feeling and experiencing. Um, and it's a way for partners to support the birth too. It's a way for you to come together with partner, maybe dance if you have the freedom to, depending on your birth like location. Um, um, so yeah, let me know if you have any questions. If you use music in your birth space or your postpartum space when you're breastfeeding, lactating. And feel free to write it in the chat. I wanted to include my kids. This is my daughter. I was um, breastfeeding her in front of that painting, Birth of the Universe. And my son, he is not an art person, but he loves to create when he loves to create. <laughs> I love that. Never forced your, yeah, never forced your children to create. I wish he would become an art because I would be so happy. But um, he's creative in his own way. Representation matters. Seeing yourself in art is healing. Um, it's supportive. It celebrates us in its empowerment. The painting on the left was created. Um, her husband reached out to me and asked me to create this piece that was inspired by her mom while she was, her mother was helping her breastfeed her baby. And so her husband reached out to ask me if I was down for it, and I was so down for it. (laughs) And back to um, what makes us, you know, support people. I didn't really have this type of support 
my mom didn't really help me with my breastfeeding journey or my birth or my postpartum. So being able to create works of art and celebrate other people's um, life, it, it just feels so good to be in a space where you can just, you know, you can celebrate these things. Mm -hmm. I just want to jump in really quick and share something um, that I it's actually a quote from Dr. Bernice King, Dr. Martin Luther King's daughter. And it's around representation. I thought it was such a powerful um, writing. And she said that if you don't think representation matters, you're probably well represented. Mm. And that just really stuck with me. And it really speaks to this um the absence of us not being relevant. Mm -hmm. uh, I shouldn't say not, not being relevant, but us not being present, us not being seen, us not being valued, right? And, mm -hmm. and I know even in the work that we do with our program, we make sure that the whole of our families are reflected in the work that we do. Um, so that they see, they, they feel seen and respected and value, valued and that, that they're humanized. Um, and, you know, when we look at representation, it provides then us an opportunity for our existence to be acknowledged and in this world, right? In, especially in our nation. So when we talk about representation, it is so important. I was li listening to, um, Chidi Eba, Ibe, who is the uh, Black medical illustrator whose Black fetus went viral. Mm -hmm. And he said something that is really powerful to me. He said that in the general medicine textbook, that Black images represent like 4.5%. And Knowing that we're not represented, but to see the percentage in general in the United States in the general medicine textbook really just kind of um, sends the message that we're not valued. Mm. And that just really struck me and and hit me um, even more so uh, lately because I've been really working on how can we um, how can we bring more representation into all of our spaces, right? Um, and I would love to just hear from those of you who are participating today. Why do you think representation matters? You can feel free to come off of uh, mute and or you can place it in the chat. And I don't want to stop the conversation, but, you know, as you give pause, as you give thought to it, you know, we can continue on. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So I think definitely like the things that um, Lauren has here, like I think it's a very empowering to see yourself for people to see themselves reflected back. Um I think it's very much healing. Uh, this, the last picture with the father and the child is a picture that I, I like to use. Like I send my um, dad's the little postcard version and they're like so pumped. And they're like, I think it connects them more with the skin to skin to see that that we do this. Um, and I don't want to use the word like gives them permission because we don't need permission. But sometimes is that not not seeing when you don't see yourself, you don't realize like this, that. To, that is okay to lean into that natural thing. Like, um, so when you see it, it just, it's, I feel like it's empowering. It's definitely empowering. Thank, Thank you, you, Keisha. Um, there's a couple in the chat. Um, Kristen says representation matters because it can positively impact the way your birth experience unfolds and the way you're treated. 
Uh, Amanda says representation matters to her because it's hard to become what you cannot see. We need to see ourselves represented. Uh, Ida shared it matters because it can be an inspiration, sometimes lets you feel seen. Um, Kristen also added, if you see yourselves in images of birth, lactating parent or anything, the more you believe you can become that or do that. Um, Chrissy says it resonates more. Um, we are sharing our stories and no support is there with someone who looks like you. It's inspiring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. You know, we look when we talk about representation and if we could, you know, go back to the storytelling part of your presentation, right? When I think about storytelling, I think about um, our ancestors and I think about the fact that they were um, prohibited from learning to read and learning to write. And the only way that they could express themselves or to pass on traditions and their values were to tell stories. Mm -hmm. And I connect that with what's happening today with the banning of books um, and those stories that are found in those books and how important it is for us to continue to tell the stories. Um, there was an author, I think her name was Virginia Hamilton, but she said storytelling was the first opportunity for Black folks to present themselves as anything other than property. And I thought, oh my God, you know, there's such rich um, there's a the richness in the culture, in our Black culture around storytelling. And, you know, that is another reason why for us, uh, representation is key. And then representation, as, as you've mentioned and as what's um, mentioned in the, the chat, you know, can impact health outcomes. And isn't that what we really want um, to happen is more positive health outcomes for our families. And I also want to add something too. There's a lot of media, there's a lot of works of art, there's a lot of conversation around the negative things that has happened to us. And um, it's really important for us to be enriched in something positive, you know? Um, that was really important to me. It's really important for us to see happiness and laughter a lot of times um, when we talk about like birth stories, when we get in a room and there's no positive story, there's no like, you know, it just, and especially when we talk about these things with pregnant people, <laughs> I'm like, no, like we, we need something more than just the struggle that we had. And, and it's any birth, you know, you can have an empowering birth with a C-section especially if you feel supported and heard and um, safe, you can have a positive experience with home birth, just like you can have a negative experience in home birth. I feel like it's really important, like you said, to have um, the positive because we are fed the negative so much, you know, like um, there was recently, I, and I'm not, I'm not going to say too much, but there was recently a situation where a baby passed away because of ne negligence. And those stories get shared more frequently. And, and we want to share those stories. Like we don't want to go in and, and not make change because change is going to happen, I think, because of that story. But the people who are pregnant, like they need something, <laughs> something to be excited about. You know, it's not just pain. Sometimes people have orgasms doing, but I didn't have that. You know, um, I really want, people to have the opportunity to to see the positive in the experiences of having children um and also know that they're negative too we can't hide from you know the challenges but yeah I wanted to add that. okay i love this oh i'm like i love this i love being in this space um so here's a few um of my other works of art um Excuse me. There, I wanted to actually. The, I'm I'm happy that I said the positive. This 
this is a birth worker. I, I should be better with dates. I, I feel so connected to people on social media. <laughs> um, but she's a birth worker. And when I, when she submitted this photo, she just had this smile. Like I, I was obsessed with capturing this, this smile that she had. Um, I didn't realize it, but you know, baby, baby was showing out, you know, it's a boy. <laughs> But yeah, I love the smile. I love the position of her neck. She's just in awe. Like she was just, just blissful. It's called blissful birth. And um, yeah, this is also a birth worker. Um, and most of the people that I paint are actual people. I'm just starting to not paint from actual people because I want to experiment more. And yeah. Let me know if you have any comments about um, any of these pieces. This is like my favorite because of the representation of a, a happy birth. And birth is not always happy rainbows and butterflies, you know. Birth is, it is empowering, but it's a transformation. Yeah. At the bottom, there is SNS feeding. Um, some of my works of art, I really try to make people question, like, when I post this, people are like, what is that? You know, like, what is that thing? Why, why is it like that? And we start conversations about the different ways you can um, feed baby. It's not just feeding from, you know, your body, your chest, your breast, um, and breast pumping. Okay, so things to remember, um, I have great taste, not just me, you, you have great taste and know what what feels good to you um, visually to see and experience. Um, I really want us to leave here thinking that we are going to start critiquing works of art. We're going to be like, you know, when we see a, a picture of a, a maybe a, a painting or a, a photograph, we're going to start making comments and being like, I love this because this relates to me. Instead of great piece or a beautiful piece, we're going to really start feeling connected to what we're seeing. We're going to engage with it. We're going to bring our stories forth, um, the storytelling aspect. Just because I don't create art does not make my opinion less than the creators. Um, I have people all the time say, oh, I'm not an artist. And it hurts because you have an opinion. You have the excuse me, you have a life that you you have, like you you have experience. It doesn't mean that my opinion is greater because I paint. Um, there are some amazing artists who just um, create in the, the dark, you know, like they don't post it on social media. But um, yeah, I just want people to know that it, it, your opinion is not less valuable than mine. I can experiment with, with art just for the enjoyment of challenging myself, something I need to work on. Um, I think more people should have art supplies and paint because they just want to paint. <laughs> it's something to do. Let me know how you feel about art. Um, and if there's anything I should add. All right, so let's connect. Um, here is my website. My website is going through some challenges right now. Um, but you can still purchase um, if you click like the links at the top. Um, here's my email address and my social media handles. I want to also add that I have a shop called Birth Nerds and Birth Nerds is all about reproductive health, connecting people, um, having like just telling stories like um, not just telling stories. But my goal is for someone to see you in a Birth nerd shirt and they ask you like, why? Why is lactation important? Why is Black maternal health important? And you can just share all your gifts with them um, just because they saw the show. <laughs> I love birth nerds. We had that conversation before, though. We thank you for your time, though. Yeah. Speaking and sharing your art with us. It was wonderful. I love it. We are down to if our last. If anyone has any questions, yeah. Yeah, I'm I was sorry. gonna say no, no. I was gonna say, you know, if um, any of our, our participants would like to ask you a question. 
um, you know, please feel free to use the raise your hand for the last couple of minutes before we uh, end today. Um, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there and I'll let Liana go ahead and close out. Um, one second. I just want to again thank everybody for taking the time out to participate with this community discussion, this interview with Lauren, and we just appreciate you for your time. Um, everyone's saying thank you so much. It was fantastic. Thank you for sharing your art and inspirational spirit with us. Been amazing. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your stories. Thank you for being a part of this. It means so much to me to be able to be in a space with such amazing people. I can tell that y'all are passionate about it. Like I can <laughs> tell that, you know, it this feels so good to me. Um, there is a one question. Ida said, What are the benefits of having a doula if you feel you have support from family and friends? Ooh, that's a juicy question. <laughs> okay, so it depends on what kind of doula you want. But even if you have family and friends to support you, the doula is the one. Okay, so doulas are the one that make sure you drink in water. <laughs> like, you know, I've been in birth spaces where dad is there, mom is there, whole family is there, and nobody is checking in. Every, it feels like everybody is waiting for baby to come. Um, in certain birth spaces, although you may have a lot of family, they tell you like home birth and birth center births, they don't want you to have too many people in the room. The doula is the person who is going to assist you. They're thinking of you before they're really thinking about baby. And that's just, that's also postpartum. They remind you about your birth options. They remind you about like what you have on your birthing list. Like let's say if you um, want to do skin to skin and you forgot because everything is chaotic, the nurse trying to take the baby, and they may remind you, hey, you know, then you want skin to skin. They're very gentle. Um, they help you advocate. There's so many benefits of having a doula. Um, and I think if you want a doula, reach out to a doula. Um, set up consultation. There's a lot of birth workers who have consultation. But think about postpartum. Um, think about birth doulas. Think about infertility doulas. Think of, there's so many different types of doulas. Full spectrum doulas, like. Doulas are amazing and they're smart and they know what they're talking about. And they give good advice. <laughs> Resource center. Yeah. And one more thing too, doulas will hook you up with the things in your area. So um, as a doula, my passion, like even if someone is pregnant or someone comes up to me, asks me about my shirt, I'll give them information about breastfeeding groups in the area. So doulas are a resource center. I'm sorry. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. We are at time and we want to be respectful of your time today. So thank you. Thank you everyone for participating. Thank Liana, thank you for being a phenomenal co-host. <laughs> Loren, thank you so much for being our wonderful guest today. Such wonderful Thanks. information. And we will stay connected for sure. So everyone have a fantastic day. Bye, thank you for coming. Bye, everyone.